it's a cliche to say this, but the story is kind of built on them. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob, I'm the Cowhat Librarian, and I'm here today to talk to you about Skyborn Sparrow Rising, the first book in a new series by Jessica Corey. I stumbled onto this on the new book display at my library and thought the cover was really intriguing and the inside the cover flap description was interesting and so I gave it a try. Ellie Meadows is a member of the Sparrow Clan. Everyone in her world is a human with wings and their wings are based on common birds. As a member of the Sparrow Clan, Ellie has fairly rounded and relatively weak wings, and her clan is primarily responsible for farming and such. The higher-born clans, like the hawks and eagles of the world, are tasked with more important jobs, and traditionally they're members of the Gold Wings, a legendary flying crew of knights in their world. Well, when Ellie was a young, young child, her parents were killed by gargoyles, flying stone beasts that come out when it's cloudy and attack any people who happen to be flying or out of their houses at the time. And her parents were killed by one. And she was rescued by a gold wing that intervened. And when Ellie suggested that someday she'd like to be a gold wing and help people too, the gold wing she spoke with encouraged her to follow the rules and follow her dream. So she's grown up learning the rules and codes of the Gold Wings and planning for the great trial in their community. And the top three finishers will get to try out for the Gold Wings. So she enters the trial and one of the higher born kids interferes with her and throws her to the ground, even though there's not supposed to be any contact between the participants. Ellie's frustrated. She thinks she can get up and catch him. But then she hears a cry for help, and she goes and finds a boy about her age crashed in the field with black wings and with a wound in his shoulder. She doctors him up and says she'll come back and they'll meet up later on, and flies off to finish the race and comes in last. She's punished for it. Her house mother of the orphanage she grows up in is not impressed and threatens to send her away to a place that will clip her wings and teach her to respect her role in society. And with no other option open to her, Ellie sneaks out to meet the boy. He told her that there was a wild card entry into the race to become a member of the Gold Wings, and that's the only thing she has left for her, to travel with him and try out to become a wild card entry. So she travels with Knox and learns that he is a crow, a group that no longer has a clan. Their clan was shattered because they were blamed for doing magic. And he's grown up on his own and is trying to complete a quest for a lord of his. And so Ellie gets drawn into his group of people and they head off to steal a gem. Ellie doesn't realize they're stealing it until the moment they make a delivery to a noble lord and escape in commotion. Well, as it turns out, Knox and his crew work for thief lord called the Talon, and they've been tasked with stealing a sky stone. And it's the magical MacGuffin that powers the remainder of this story. Through the course of things, they learn what the sky stone actually does and proceed to the capital so that Ellie can attempt to gain a wildcard entry into the Gold Wings race. So first the good. The world building is excellent. I thought it was a really, really fun and fresh take on a fantasy world. I thought the ways that people resembled the birds their clans are named after was interesting. I could see a society developing this way. The gargoyles, while there's not a lot about them, their presence is interesting and it places some really, really neat restrictions on how the heroes can operate and how their society can build itself. I thought all of that stuff was wonderful. And if 
you enjoy this book, there are going to be more in the series, and that's a plus two for anyone who does read it and enjoy it. But as I said in the intro, it, to some extent this story is built on cliches. The, the heroine is an orphan who tries to surpass her station in life. She joins up with someone she barely knows, believing him to be one thing and learning that he's another. There's a few other things later in the story that fall under the same ridiculous cliché label. There's a horrible disease that affects some people that isn't mentioned at all in her community, but she knows nearly everything about later in the story. And there's a magical cure for it, and it the pile of cliches just sort of stack one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other, and it really would have been nice to see just a little more originality. It it feels almost like the author had an, an idea for a really, really, really cool world, and went to a random story generator online to pick some common elements to twine together, and that's a shame. I think Ellie Meadows deserves better. I think this world deserves better than just a stack of cliches. And I'm hopeful that the future books in the series will evolve and grow beyond this one. Now, with that said, there are spoilers ahead because I have to talk about the deal breakers. Now, as I said, the stack of cliches gets a little bit ridiculous. The magical MacGuffin turns out to be an eye from a gargoyle and happens to be a magical cure for this magical disease that affects people and the king is trying to interfere with it and the Talon is trying to interfere with it and it, it all gets tied together in this huge mass of coincidences. During the Goldwing trial, to I'm sure no reader's surprise, Ellie does meet the minimum requirements to become a Goldwing. But then it's stripped away from her because she's not a highborn clan member and she's involved with this other nonsense. And the, the entire trial was a little bit ridiculous. This has been the goal of Ellie's life. And it, it plays out as a race with a short, quick fight that she wins. And her coming in 50th place, the last of the people who actually qualified to become gold wings by a quirk of fate that the flags that the winners had to retrieve from the top of the mountain there was one left trampled under the snow that she happened to see that no one else did so she's been working towards this all her life she's been showing she can overcome the odds and she succeeds through a quirk of fate and then has it taken away from her it just it did not sit right with me and the ending, well, there wasn't one. I know I said there was going to be more books in this series, and there are, and hopefully they'll carry on in a stronger way, but my expectation is that the first book in a series should have a complete story. Sure, you can have last minute um, cliffhangers, like at the end of Ava Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch. You can have things that set up the story in the second book, like the end of Naomi Novik's A Deadly Education, where she receives a letter from her mom at the very end that flips things upside down heading into the second book. But this, it felt a lot like the final couple chapters should have been the first chapters of the next book. Ellie and her friends escape with the Sky Stone and they take off to an area that they've never been before. They don't resolve things with the Talon, they don't resolve things with the King, they don't resolve things with Ellie's family, they don't resolve things with the Goldwings, they, there's nothing. It feels like this is half of a book. And I was so disappointed. All they had to do was wrap it up with Ellie winning the contest, being crowned as a Goldwing, and then having someone come and arrest her for her involvement in the other stuff and that even would have been a better way to end this in my opinion so right now my recommendation for you or the reader in your life the kid in your classroom your child the 
library patrons you're recommending stuff to, you can pass this on to them. You absolutely can. I recommend waiting to see what the sequel does and then proceeding from there. Because I think you're going to have to recommend this as a series. Whether it's this book and a sequel or a trilogy, I think it's going to be an all or nothing proposition. And that's disappointing. Even Star Wars told a complete story in the first movie. Anyway, with that, thank you for listening to me ramble about this book. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, of course. And please check back to see what other stuff I have to talk about from the Calcat Library. Thank you. Bye now.